Good evening, welcome to the Buck Stops here. I'm Vishnu Shobh. On the program tonight, the army doesn't want to use the word surgical strikes. But what we know is this, that special forces from the Indian army struck Naga insurgents along the Nagaland Myanmar border. And that it's almost certain that a part of the operation took place on the other side of the border. The operation itself was not a massive operation like the surgical strikes against Pakistan after the Uri terror strike, nor were they at the scale of the operations that the army carried out against NSCNK terrorists two years back in Myanmar. But the question is this, are cross-border raids or raids along the border, if, if you want to use those words instead, is this part of a new normal or has this in fact been going on for a while? And if it is a new normal, what message is the government trying to send when information of these operations does get out? We'll get to that in a moment. Well, our big focus just days ahead of the anniversary of India's surgical strikes against Pakistan. The army today hit Naga insurgents of the NSCNK faction along the border with Myanmar. Did Indian forces cross over into Myanmar as they did in 2015? Though the army refuses to use the word surgical strike to describe today's operations, what is clear is that the army says it's eliminated several terrorists of the NSCN while not suffering a single casualty. Well, here's what we know. 10 to 12 highly specialized soldiers of the Indian army, we aren't naming the units, uh, with support from the Assam Rifles, were involved in action against the NSCNK along the Myanmar border at 4.45 a.m. this morning. The army says the NSCNK has been very badly hit. Now, in the, they were hit in this operation, which was planned by local commanders. We also know this, that a small army unit acted on specific intelligence to move into the area along the India-Myanmar border. They were engaged by NSCNK terrorists. It is possible that some of the military action took place on the other side of the border. Though the army inflicted significant casualties on the terrorists, like in last year's surgical strike operations, there is no specific casualty count. The soldiers returned after the operation, again, again no Indian casualties. But what's important to understand is that while the army did not plan this as a major surgical strike operation, small military operations targeting terrorists do frequently take place in thickly forested areas of the Northeast, where physically marking the border between India and Myanmar is out of the question. My colleague Ratnadeep Chaudhary has been tracking this story very closely as well. He sent us this report. Now, this is a major success in counterinsurgency operations in Northeast. This comes as, as a part of a series of operations that are taking place in that stretch of the border in Tirab, Changlang and Longli district of Arunachal Pradesh and Mon and Twensang of Nagaland. Now these five districts are contiguous to each other. On the other side of the border you have Burmese Naga villages in Myanmar and these villages are stronghold of NSNK because its founder, its supremo SS Kaplang was a Burmese Naga. Though he died few months back, his carders still enjoy a good support there. So by hitting uh, them in their own backyard, the you know, so security forces have not only uh, perhaps hit their morale, but have sent a strong challenge to them. Also, because this area is being used by other uh, Northeast rebel groups. So, what we are hearing from our uh, sources at Ground Zero is that this crack commando team of the special forces and their support team from the Assam Rifles entered through the Longling district of Arunachal Pradesh into that area of operation, which is Lakho village on the Indo Myanmar border. And in hot pursuit, what we uh, uh, are hearing to, uh, from the ground sources that they might have even crossed the border and they exited the area of operation through Mon. Uh, so it's clearly, uh, for the first time, perhaps that the insurgents and the NSN uh, K has got hit on its own backyard on a, a transit route which it was using for years together. And this is a major success. And it comes just close on the heels of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Myanmar. And this shows that there is a strategy change as far as uh, India is concerned in terms of carrying out counterinsurgency operations in Northeast. Now, hot pursuit perhaps would be the new order of the day. Well, joining us now to look at uh, the importance of today's operation, General V.P. Malik, the former Army Chief. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Uh, in the studio, Colonel Ajay Shukla, uh, Vivek Kaju, former Secretary in the External Affairs Ministry, uh, uh, Professor Rakesh Sinha, thanks very much for being with us, sir, of the RSS, and Ojoy Kumar, spokesperson of the Congress. General Malik, let me come to you first. Sir, news of this operation actually came out. Normally, these operations, I'm told, keep happening. 
So is this really some sort of a new normal when you potentially went across the international border, irrespective of what the government may say, we know the operation was in fact uh, likely to have been on both sides of the border, or is this something general that's been happening for a while? Uh, Vishnu, firstly, we must uh, remember that the uh, although the boundary in this area with Burma, uh, Myanmar, is demarcated, there is no fence like the kind that you have in uh, on the western border, LOCR. So, in these Patkai Hills area, uh, you really cannot make out whether how much deep you have gone either into the Myanmari side, or sometimes even the Myanmari forces also manage to come into our area. Uh, so it's very difficult to say that, yes, we have gone on the other side or they have come on, uh, on our side. Uh, and the other thing that we have to remember is that the presence of the Myanmar's armed forces in this area is very, very thin. I know it for sure because uh, I have commanded the division in that area and things haven't really changed much. Now, I believe that this particular operation had been planned a few days ago and there was intelligence, and that intelligence was being followed. So there was a trail which led to these people who were uh, camping or who were uh, operating in that particular area, uh, which may be close to a village. And these people would be either the uh, Konyaks or the Wanchus or the Noktes. These are the tribal areas which have generally been forming large forces under uh, NSCN Kaplan Group. Uh, and uh, they were uh, uh, attacked very aggressively by our people because they had full information. And after inflicting uh, casualties, people are talking in terms of 12 to 15. I don't know the exact number, but uh, they did cause inflict, uh, they inflicted heavy casualties. They recovered some weapons also, and they have come back. Now, these kind of things have been happening with the NSC and KA because for the last two, two and a half years, they have picked up arms again and they have broken the truce which they had uh, established earlier. And you recall two years ago, they had inflicted heavy casualties on a Dogra uh, convoy which was going uh, in Manipur area. Yes. So we, uh, our troops have been chasing them and have been get, collecting information and wherever there is a chance, then they would inflict casualties on right. them. And I, I think in a way it's a good thing because it... Uh, Firstly, it, is a, it gives me a sense of alertness that people are alert there, people are aggressive, and they are pursuing their uh, uh, adversary. And secondly, is that these kind of operations also bring about peace and tranquility in those areas. Okay. And General, I just, want to, I just want to go across. General, I just want to go across. This is a very underdeveloped to, area. Sure. And General, I want to go across to uh, Ambassador uh, Vivek Karju. Uh, uh, Ambassador Karju, you've served uh, in Myanmar as well. Um, the, the general over there uh, mentioning that these were areas which were not very, patrolled very heavily by the Myanmar army. But how does Myanmar uh, actually see operations like this? Is there a tacit understanding that, look, in, in hot pursuit scenarios or perhaps some other scenarios, India will continue to do strikes like this? Because two years back, when uh, word got out of the operation that India did, uh, there seemed to be some indicators from Myanmar that they weren't entirely kept in the loop. Look, the Myanmaris above all are a very sensitive people and uh, they are extremely sensitive especially about their sovereignty. And uh, therefore, if uh, the Indian army or the Indian state projects uh, that their sovereignty was violated uh, in the uh, context of an army operation, uh, they feel terribly offended. So this time around, uh, I think uh, the matter has been handled uh, with great maturity. Uh, the army statement uh, categorically mentions that uh, the international border was not crossed. Uh, it also categorically mentioned that the army uh, acted in response to firing uh, from uh, the Haplang boys. Now that is something that uh, would act as a as a kind of a balm on Myanmar's sensitivities. And I do think that over the last couple of years, uh, there is far greater cooperation from the Myanmar side 
because uh, there is a greater sense of confidence uh, between uh, Yangon or now Napido and uh, and Delhi. Okay. Uh, and that's all to the good. Uh, in 2015, if I may just add one sentence. Yes. In 2015, uh, there were some people who felt that the government ministers, at least one minister, acted a little impetuously. This time around, if you notice, the uh, political people uh, have kept completely out and the army statement too, I think, has been issued by the Eastern Command, which is again good. Okay. Uh, Ajay, uh, you've served uh, in the Northeast. Um, how, uh, how difficult is, is it for the army in the actual conduct of operations like this, given the fact uh, that the insurgents, the terrorists that we, we seek to target uh, are, are one with the land, they know the terrain extremely well. Uh, for, for special forces or regular forces, what are some of the toughest operational challenges? Well, uh, to start off with, while the terrorists or the insurgents, as I would prefer to call them, uh, know the lie of the land very well, so too does the army. Right. They occupy posts, they patrol their areas regularly, they know exactly where the boundary lies. Uh, this idea that they can stray across the boundary without knowing it is not a correct idea. Uh, when they cross the boundary, they cross it knowingly and they cross it having planned to cross the boundary. Secondly, this idea of a, 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 an operation taking place on both sides of the border, a targeted strike, uh, does not hold water because the, uh, the camps of the NSCNK are very well known. It's known as GHQ North. It's located a good 15 to 20 kilometers inside Myanmar's territory. And we have struck it at least thrice that I know of. And we have struck it in coordination with the Myanmar's army. Uh, so this, this uh, I am finding it a little difficult to, to sort of uh, get my head around how this operation has taken place, a cross-border operation in the immediate vicinity of the border, because they don't establish camps right. in the immediate vicinity. So, they so establish it could well be deeper. Inside it could be deeper inside is what you're suggesting. Either it could be deeper or this idea that it was a cross-border operation is not true and this was a regular operation on our side of the border. I mean, patrols do go out every day of the week. They do encounter NSCN patrols that are infiltrating or exfiltrating or tax collecting, and that often leads to an exchange of fire. So we are still not clear about what exactly this was, whether it was a, a, a sort of very cleverly concealed strike deep inside uh, Myanmar's territory, or it was just a regular encounter. Is this, uh, 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 Professor, um, a part of a strategy of this government where they actually want to assert the fact that they're doing this? Initially, when Myanmar happened two years back, there was an element of reticence uh, to actually talk about it. Then there was a minister who actually came out and spoke about it. Um, and then, you know, I mean, news flooded. Since then, we've had our surgical strikes against Pakistan. Now news of this has come out. These were small operations. When news of something like this actually comes out, it's because it's being shared. Is that part of a strategy of this government? Let the world know what we are doing militarily? No, our border is safe. That is this uh, paradigm of this government. It is not that previous government was not doing, but here the assertion and the uh, giving army the free hand, tackling the insurgency and the terrorists. You know, Vishnu, there is a, there are changes in Northeast. The internal dynamics, politics of Northeast has been changing for the last three and four years. That is also giving army confidence. Otherwise, what happened that th there was internal support to the insurgent group. Now, this is not happening. You just see the changes taking place not only in Arunachal Pradesh and Manipur, but also in Nagaland's politics has been transforming. Yes. It's not that BJP is going ahead. This is one of the factors. But the anti-India slogan, anti-India forces who, who exist, uh, which were existing in Nagaland, now they, they are getting weakened. That is one factor. Second factor is that there is a strategic relationship with Myanmar and India. India has shown maturity as far as the this uh, uh, Rohingya Muslims yes. are concerned. This is th that time the many people, particularly secular stories, are shouting for the Rohingya Muslims, th but they were ignoring the fact that we have to develop a long-term relationship because 1,640 kilometers is a strategic border okay, I with think Myanmar. The Rohingya issue has nothing to do with this. Mm, not the Rohingya, Rohingya but, but the Rohingyas are not terrorists. No, the I am not. I am not. I am not, 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 not okay. calling them terrorists. I, I just say the government has 
shown the maturity while the handling the Rohingya issue. Okay. Uh, ha had we been in hurry to handle that issue and the on the on the question of humanism and human, human rights, then that, that would have been affected our relationship with that because this National Council of Nagaland it has uh, established a government in exile. Yes. And they declared Nagaland as independent state. So okay. this is the main is insurgent group and now I feel that this group has been weakened by after 2015, this is second, yes. second substantive uh, surgical strike. It is up to the army to reveal or not to reveal because yeah. there are certain strategic things which should not be revealed. But I, that I can assure that there is a very good understanding between Myanmar and India and that understanding is helping India to fight against the insurgents. Ajay Kumar, uh, does the Congress party welcome uh, these strikes? One way or the other, uh, the NSCNK is, is an enemy. They kill our people uh, irrespective of where they may be. The fact is we are striking them. Does the Congress party welcome this move? Yeah, uh, Vishnu, obviously, <coughs> sorry, obviously any kind of activities against uh, anti-India elements is most welcome and, uh, and should be continued. Uh, the army operations like Ajay and uh, others have been saying have been uh, going on for many, many uh, years. The question again is earlier also I'm sure that uh, despite uh, Professor Rakesana saying that the army had definitely free hand in terms of operation. The question is how much does the political establishment use the army actions for you know publicizing is what we need to be careful about which i think this government has shown uh, very very little restraint the army uh, explaining its action is perfectly uh, legitimate but then the politicians jumping in and then start taking credit about you know giving free and on all this is a bit dangerous the the best example is recently in manipur some godman had gone there and said that he got people to be surrendered uh, uh, the terrorists to surrender and now there are so many stories about that surrender. So I would again request uh, Professor Sinas and CC. But Ajoy, this is one part I don't keep, understand. Uh, uh, at know, one, at, at, Ajoy, at, at, at one level I do understand you when you say that this government may be scoring political points uh, when it talks about army operations or reveals details of the sort. But in this particular case, uh, what has it done which is necessarily wrong in sharing this detail? Because the other side of that argument is that you need to let people know because you are an accountable government of what sort of military action you are taking against people who are hitting you. No, no. So, Vishnu, you got me wrong. I said the Army Eastern Command sharing the information is perfectly kosher and legitimate. I think the army uh, is mature enough to decide its communication and is perfectly, even on this incident, I think it's perfectly okay. I am saying that the political establishment suddenly should not start, you know, hyperventilating, saying, I, you know, we went into Burma, we did this, we, you know, we gave a free hand, because the army, all through its post-independence, has always exhibited profession professionalism. So okay, so thus far, Ajay, it's not happened. There has been no hyperventilating as of this I evening. In fact, they've Vishnu, been fairly I, cautious I of it. I think uh, this is the tragedy uh, of the. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, Ajay, 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 this is tragedy of the Congress politics that when army takes action, you know, in 1971 when Indira Gandhi was Vishnu. prime minister, the credit went to General the Malik. I'll come to you in half a this, second. This is this is not, nothing nothing unexceptional because the, the prime minister Narendra Modi is the prime minister. If uh, to, tomorrow you are the prime minister, I, you are taking I, army is taking action. Naturally, credit goes to you. It is the army which reveals the strategy. It is the army which declares Rakeji. and the political establishment. Okay, let's not. Make this into a Congress versus. Let's not make this a Congress versus. Vishnu, this yeah. gives confidence to the people that we are fi fighting against insurgency. Insurgency is at the death knell. This is this. Ra the people Rakeji. must be communicated. Okay, okay, okay. Both of you, one second. General Malik wants to come and go ahead, sir. We've got only two minutes left. Vishnu. Go ahead, General Malik. Okay. You know, I, I I think we are trying to read too much of politics in this. Here is an operation. Uh, which has been carried out uh, by the army based on some intelligence that they had and they have carried it out successfully. They have not uh, talked much about, talked anything about politics. They have just given information to you. If you don't get it, then you will keep on saying, the media will keep on saying that this has been hidden and then all kinds of uh, rumors start flowing around. So I think what they have done is absolutely correct. Let's not read too much of politics in it. These are the kind of operations which have been done in the past and they will carry on because NSCNK has now shown that they will inflict casualties on our people. So when we get a target, there is no reason why we should go after them. And they have done it very successfully. 
Okay. Uh, and as far as our relations with Myanmar are concerned, they are good relations indeed. And it has to be handled tactfully. And let's not read uh, Rongyas and others. We have good relations. Sometimes they give us information. But I think in this case, there was no information from their side. It was based on our own intelligence. And there, I think the locals are also helping us now. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Kajjo, I'll come to you in a moment, Ajay. Uh, just one point. First of all, the army has been very restrained. I mean, all yeah. this business about cross-border strikes and so on. The army is not claiming yeah. that. Secondly, we need to just consider for a moment, talking about the political dimension of this, the Prime Minister had announced more than a year ago that the Naga problem has been resolved. The peace treaty has been signed with the Naga government. Uh, we need to start considering where what has happened to that peace treaty. The NSC and K is back in action. It's back in they the field. They abrogated that treaty. Uh, they, no, that treaty was never signed with the NSENK. They could, it, it was there, a completely was, yes. hyped up, overhyped uh, projection of the reality on the ground. The reality on the ground is the Naga problem continues to be alive. Mm -hmm. We continue to fight that problem. And what Mr. Mm -hmm. Rakesh Sena was saying is that everything sounds anki dori in Nagaland is not the case. Vishnu, I have 10 seconds. You go Nagaland, I see the, the sea change in politics yeah, in Nagaland last 18 months. And I, I am claiming that BJP was a marginal force in Nagaland, but now BJP is a very strong no, force. I'm sure it may it come is, into but, the power. But, but this a nationalist is, power coming to, to the power in Nagaland. People are unaware with the Nagaland. We are the ground about relative terrorists and in, insurgents sir, operating sir, in our territory. Sir, north in northeast, the ground relative has been changing. You are talking about the ground relative of the two years back. Okay. Now in two years, the okay. ground relative has changed in northeast. Well, we, we still feel the need to strike. We still feel the need to strike people attacking us. Ambassador Kaju, last word to you. I'm sorry, sir. Only. 30 seconds. Go ahead, yeah. sir. Yes. First point, I think I've seen reports today which indicate that the framework agreement is to be fleshed out in a detailed agreement and that groups other than the Khaplang boys are in Delhi to discuss this. Uh, that report is there. It hasn't been contradicted as yet. Second, as of now, the matter has been handled very skillfully and as I said maturely. Yes. I hope this continues. If it does, the government, uh, this needs to be acknowledged by everyone. All right. Well, one way or the other, uh, it's being reported now. Uh, information of these attacks doesn't come out very often. The point is that the army does go after uh, terrorists in the northeast. Uh, and I'm told that this particular operation was actually planned at a fairly small, fairly local level by local commanders, obviously, uh, with a handful of others in the know. I'm completely out of time. I'd like to thank all of you very much for being with us. Goodbye.